Hello everybody and thank you for coming to another story time today. Today we're going to have a very rockin' story time because tomorrow on April 2nd, it is Geologist's Day. Does anybody know what a geologist studies? I gave you a hint. If you said rocks, you are correct. So a geologist is a person who studies geology and geology is the study of rocks. So anybody or a scientist who studies rocks is called a geologist. And tomorrow we're celebrating them. So geologists are super important. They have a very important job that has helped us learn a lot about the planet, about Earth, and even about other planets. Um, but some of the things that we've learned about Earth just from studying rocks include what Earth is made of and how the Earth formed. And it turns out that millions of years ago, the Earth looked a lot different than it does now. And geologists have learned that through studying rocks. We can also tell what types of plants and animals lived a long time ago by studying fossils in the rocks. Um, and we can also learn a lot about the different minerals. So those are like the ingredients that make up a rock because rocks can look really different as you probably know. Maybe some of you have a rock collection at home and they don't all look the same. That's because they're made up of different rock ingredients that we call minerals. And we use minerals for a ton of different things every day. So for example, if you have chalk at home, right? That's from a mineral that we get from rocks. So we have all these different uses for minerals and we wouldn't know anything about them without geologists. So tomorrow we're celebrating geologists, we're celebrating rocks, so get your rock collections out. Um, there is a certain type of geology that our story is gonna be about today and it's called speleology. Does anybody know that word? What's a speleologist study? That one's a little harder. Speleology is the study of caves, which I think are super cool. I love visiting caves. If you've never been to a cave before, um, I'll put a resource down below for the end of our story time with caves in Minnesota and Wisconsin, actually all around the country, because they can be found in lots of different places and they're all very different and they are all super cool. So our story today is going to teach us about caves from all over the world in a book called Caves. It was written by Nell Cross Beckerman and illustrated by Kaylin Chalk. It says in the flap here, all over the world caves wait, eager to be explored, watching for wanderers. Will you answer the call? Would you go in a cave? Have you been in a cave? In the shade of the woods is a hill with a hole. Beaconing black, goosebump chills, excitement and fear battle. Which will win? You want to go in. Mm. Do you dare? So caves can be really exciting, and for some people, they can be a little bit scary, right? They're pretty dark inside a cave. A cave is a natural hole big enough for a human to enter. Caves are usually deeper than they are tall. Speleology is the science of studying and exploring caves. Cave explorers are known as cavers or spelunkers or speleologists. There are amazing caves all over the world, just waiting to be discovered. Just don't go in alone. Seeping through the earth, water, drip, drip, dripping into a dark, silent room. Careful! When raindrops fall on limestone, over millions of years, caves and beautiful rock formations are made. Water dripping underground leaves particles behind on the cave roof, creating rock pendants called stalactites. Directly below the stalactites, the water falls to the ground, building up stone stalagmites. If broken, they could take thousands of years to grow back if they grow back at all. So if you get a chance to go into a cave, it's really important not to touch the formations in the cave because it's taken them a really long time to form and we don't wanna do them any damage. 
So here's a stalactite. It hangs tight from the ceiling. It's got to hold on tight. And the stalagmite grows up from the ground. It takes a lot of mite to grow up. This cave sat in secret, appearing ordinary, except to those few who looked closer. Took time to go deeper. A dazzling surprise. Do my best to pronounce the places on here. In 2000, in Nayaca, Mexico, two mining brothers discovered caves filled with some of the largest natural crystals ever found. The Cueva de los Cristales had been filled with water, but after a silver mining company pumped the water out, people could see the 39-foot selenite crystals. Wow, can you imagine a crystal nearly 40 feet long? Scorching temperatures required visitors to wear special cooling suits to study the crystals. When the pumping stopped, the cave reflooded, refilling with warm, mineral-rich water that helped the crystals grow. Look how big they are. Six women dropped into darkness, squeezing, crawling, superhero scooching, to dig up bones. Hello, ancient cousin. More than 1,800 fossils of a previously unknown early relation to humans, Homo nalidi, were discovered in the Rising Star Cave System in South Africa. They were more than 200,000 years old. Studies of these ancient cousins continue today and help inform our understanding of human history. Hired for their dexterity, ability to fit in tight spaces, and scientific training, six women carried out the main excavation. One section of the entrance required crawling in a Superman pose with one arm out and the other tight against the chest. Wow, I don't think that I would like to do that. Which one of you would like to do that? Imagine having to crawl through super tight spots like that. Doesn't sound very comfortable. Those are six very brave women. In the humid, hot swamp, gators swim, turtles plop, snakes skim, water rushes. Divers sink into the black while you cannonball. Underwater cave systems are caves connected by long passages. Divers in Florida swam the passages of one cave system for 29 hours the longest cave dive ever. They entered at the Wakula Springs Cave and came out seven miles later at the Turner Sink Cave. They mapped what is now called the Wakula Leon Sinks Cave System. It is the longest underwater cave system in the United States. Wow, it's a very long time to be underwater. When the sun sets, they awake by the Thousands flying jaggedly out of your dreams. Ooh, who do you think they're talking about? Guided by sound to eat, then returning to their inverted slumber. So they find food using their ears and sleep upside down. Who would that be? Stop! Do not enter! Every summer, 20 million bats roost in Bracken Cave outside of San Antonio, Texas, making it one of the largest known concentrations of mammals in the world. While bats are often feared or viewed as pests, the majority of bats are harmless and help us by eating insects like mosquitoes. Bat conservationists work to protect bats from people by building gates at some cave entrances, letting bats enter and exit, but keeping people out. Ancient cave people looked how? Did what? So much still a mystery, but we keep finding clues. More than 20,000 years ago, some early humans lived in caves and left behind cave paintings. Several of the most famous ones are in the Lascaux Cave in France, 
which has more than 2,000 figures. Cave dwellers often used charcoal for the color black, and they ground up other minerals and mixed them with water, animal fat, and other substances to make different colors of paint. Early cave painters did not sign their paintings because writing was not yet invented. Sometimes they used a tube to blow paint powder over a hand pressed to the wall. These ancient handprints can still be seen today. High five. So there's some of the cave paintings that have been preserved because they're so well protected inside caves. Above a river of eels, a silently squirming ceiling illuminates the 30 million year old walls, dripping an eerie constellation of trap snacks. Want to share? Hmm. The Waitomo Caves in New Zealand are famous for their glowworm grotto, Ooh. where tourists can ride a boat on an underground river through a chamber where the only light comes from bioluminescent glowworms. The worms spin silk on the cave ceiling and drop down as many as 30 silk threads peppered with sticky droplets. The glow attracts insects, which then get stuck and then the worm retracts the thread and eats the prey alive. Cool. That is super cool. Molten hot earth spilling out, burning through everything. Volcano. Leaving empty tubes. Most caves are made slowly, but lava tube caves form quickly. Hot lava cools when it contacts air, forming a shell and allowing the hot lava to flow even faster. Once the flow ends, the tube is empty and cools to volcanic rock. Andara lava tubes is Australia. Andara lava tubes in Australia formed almost 200,000 years ago, and some are wheelchair accessible. So this big tunnel formed when lava passed through. And there's some of these in Hawaii too in the US. All over the world, caves wait. Filled with our past, our future, undiscovered. Ready for wandering, wandering explorers like you. To study and crouch and crawl to find them. Do you dare? So there's some more information in the back of the book. One, um, I want to read two things. One is the author's note and one is rules about going in a cave. So the author's note says, I have loved caves ever since I was a kid. My dad took me on nature adventures, including caving. The caves were cold, dark, moist, and I loved the otherworldly rock formations. Caving was exciting. To write this book, I closed my eyes and thought about how exploring those caves felt. I wanted to use words to recreate those feelings. I also did a lot of research, using books and websites to travel to faraway caves in my imagination. I hope this book inspires you to see if there's a cave close by to where you live and go on a nature adventure to see it. And then she has some pictures of her and caves when she was younger. If you are in the Driftless region, we actually live in what's called a karst region. So that means under the ground, there's a lot of limestone. And limestone is one of the types of rocks that um, when water goes over it, just like I was talking about in the book, over millions of years when water goes over limestone, it erodes it away or it dissolves it. And it forms this whole system down here in the Driftless region of sinkholes and different caves and really cool rock formations. So we have quite a few caves in this area that you can go into. And I'll, again, I'll put those in the resources um, so that you can find out where those are and visit them. And I'm also going to put in a link to a national map of the most popular caves to visit in the U.S. Because there's like way more than I thought. And this book got me super excited to visit some of the ones that are closer to me. Um, so maybe on there you can find some that are close to you and go exploring. 
before we go, I'm going to re read the cave rules for you that they put in this book. So if you do go to a cave or if you find your own cave, which would be the coolest thing ever, it says never go caving alone. Make sure there is an adult with you. Tell someone where you're going and when you will be back. Double check your supplies and dress appropriately. If you find a new cave, report it. Don't explore an undiscovered cave without an expert. Leave only light footprints and take only pictures. Respect the caves and don't damage them. If you find cave paintings or ancient artifacts, report it to a local university, which can learn from them. Even just touching rock formations with our hands, we have oils on our hands, and cave systems are so delicate that even touching those formations with our fingers can really mess them up. So if you go on a cave tour, it's more about just looking with your eyes. Cave ecosystems are fragile. Take extra care to leave them just as you found them. Consider joining a local caving group to explore caves in your area. Find out more at caves.org, home of the National Speleological Society. And if you go on a tour, we have lots of caves in the U.S. that are open to the public um, and they'll have a tour guide with you. So you don't have to worry about getting lost in the caves or not being able to find your way out. These are trained people who do this all day long, every day. And they bring groups down to get to see inside of the caves. Um, and then they help you make sure that you're not going anywhere you shouldn't or touching things that you shouldn't be to. So I love caves. I've been to quite a few caves throughout the U.S. Um, my parents, especially my dad, was really into caves. So it's something that I picked up from them. Um, and I hope that you pick it up and enjoy it too. Because like I said, here in Minnesota and Wisconsin, we do have quite a few caves you can visit. So make sure to check those out in the resources down below. Um, also included are some rock activities for Geologist Day. So have fun with those. Be thinking about geologists and speleologists and all the things that we've learned from what they study. It's pretty cool. So thank you, geologists. Thank you, speleologists. And we'll see you again soon for another story time. Bye-bye.